Premier League, for example, uh, we uh, can uh, celebrate the uh, trade relationship where, I mean, we were talking about investment, but one reason why Pakistan should think about investing in the UK is we're a great springboard into the rest of Europe. And there is no stronger champion for Pakistan in terms of opening up the European Union's market than the United States. So it's Kingdom. sort of like a gateway. Yeah, of, of get, uh, exactly. Okay, uh, while we're there, I mean, I was going to ask this later, but let me just ask you this here. Uh, UK has been supporting Pakistan tremendously in getting more access to, to, to the European Union. Shed more light on that, please. Yeah, I mean, it's a really hard grind uh, because there are lots and lots of very uh, real commercial interests engaged. But our strong belief, uh, which we know is strongly shared in Pakistan by the business community and government, is that what this country most needs is trade rather than aid. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to see Pakistan uh, on a level playing field with the rest of South Asia, trading into the European Union, and for that matter elsewhere, into the North America, for example. So we have fought uh, to persuade our European partners to open up uh, the European Union market to Pakistani goods. The first step has been to make the case for an ad hoc market easing in response to the economic difficulties caused by the disastrous 2010 floods mm -hmm. in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, as I say, it's a hard grind, but we have finally got that through the European Union, the European Parliament, uh, and now, at long last, the World Trade Organization. And I think that uh, on Tuesday, the 14th of February, we will see the final WTO sign-off on that package. The next step, which we are already at work on inside the European Union, is uh, adjusting the European Union rules for something called GSP+, which is a set of rules governing market access for developing countries, mm -hmm. which, because of the way the rules have been drawn, has until now excluded Pakistan. We want Pakistan inside that as soon as possible. We being the United Kingdom. We being the United Kingdom. And if I may ask, why have the rules been such so far that they have excluded Pakistan? It's not been directed at Pakistan. Of okay. that, I am satisfied. And these are not rules directed just at South Asia, but globally towards mm -hmm. uh, developing countries. But it, 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 it is Pakistan's misfortune, in a sense, to be just slightly too wealthy per capita to have triggered... Uh, participation in this scheme earlier on. We want to change that and make sure the rules do include Pakistan. When you say we want to change that, was for a moment like, <laughs> you're going to take no, our no, we, capita we, down. We just, we'll That'd ju be scary. We'll just, we'll just lift the threshold. No. <laughs> that, that's, that's the easier way of no. doing it. And, I mean, for the United Kingdom, because of all the ties we have between us and Pakistan. It is extremely important that this amazing country mm -hmm. should flourish. It faces very significant challenges. We would like to do what we can to help in a small way this country overcome those challenges because unless Pakistan is flourishing, we are not truly flourishing either. And that applies above all to Pakistan's economy. If Pakistan's economy is flourishing, it is growing, your infrastructure will be expanding, uh, that reinforces the economy, it gives us business opportunities, trade between the two countries will grow. This country, Pakistan, will be a more confident partner for the international community. That can only be good. So focusing on economic growth is a very important part of what we want to do in the relationship. You said if Pakistan's not flourishing, we're not flourishing. Um, I'd like you to talk more on that because the assumption or, or the first guess is why does UK really need Pakistan, the much larger and more stronger partners out there? So why Pakistan specifically? And I'm, and I'm not saying this just to create a ripple here, but that's a question people would want an answer for. Well, I think you're too modest in a way. Um, 
the UK may look like a country far away. I hope our Celebrating Connections campaign will bring us a little bit closer okay. in Pakistani minds. But for the UK, Pakistan does not feel that far away. Uh, it doesn't feel far away culturally. Uh, it doesn't feel far away in the news, mostly regrettably bad news. Uh, it is, uh, I think, fair to say that if Pakistan uh, is, uh, is suffering as a state, probably the impacts are felt more in the United Kingdom than in any other country outside the immediate region. Uh, this isn't, I'm not just sort of making a point about terrorism, uh -huh. for example. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about things like illegal migration, uh -huh. um, uh, which is not good for either country, sure. uh, or the individuals who get caught up in it, uh, or organized crime, or the drugs trade. You mm -hmm. suffer by sitting right next to Afghanistan. Drugs come through uh, course, Pakistan yes. on their yeah. way to the United Kingdom. So there are, there are many reasons why, because uh, we are so joined up as two countries, uh, our futures and our fates are tied together too. In good and in bad. And in good and, and in bad. Happiness. Exactly. For sickness and <laughs> for health. <laughs> yes. That's right. I guess, I guess it, it is a deeper marriage than one would assume. Um, I'd like to take a short break here. Adam Thompson, His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Britain, is here with us. Let's take a short break. <laughs> Adam Thompson, His Excellency, the British High Commissioner of Pakistan is here with us. Um, Adam, we're talking about the, the celebrating connections. I know personally that you are spending a lot of money in education, and you've said you've, you're helping us with trade. Now, when I see culture, development, and sport, sport, I'm, you're being very generous after what we've done to you. I don't know how you'd <laughs> help us. Um, yeah, we, we've had our day, and you've had yours. Um, what about development? When you, when you talk of development, the first thing I'd like to ask is, would you be investing in infrastructure? Would you be helping us? I mean, how would you be helping us there? There are three big areas where we are trying to make a small positive difference. Mm -hmm. uh, one is in education. I'd like mm -hmm. to say a bit more about that. A second is in maternal and child health. Mm -hmm. And the third is uh, trying to offer some practical assistance in growing the Pakistan economy. Mm -hmm. Those are the major areas of engagement. But I did say in a small way, um, for us, Pakistan looms large as a, a development partner because it is becoming the largest development program we have in the entire world. All right. uh, and just on education, for example, we may be spending up to about 650 million pounds, about a billion dollars, you do the rupees for yep. me, uh, it, between now and uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. For us, this is a large program. For Pakistan, it's a small program. Uh, the total international development assistance to this country is about 1% of your gross domestic product. Mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan is not aid dependent. Uh, so our interventions as a development partner need to be ones where we're really adding value. Uh, we think that education is one such area where we can help Pakistan make a real difference for itself. And we're focusing on the unglamorous area of primary education mm -hmm. and the simple task of trying to get more five to nine-year-olds into primary school. Barely 50% see the inside of a classroom today and probably less than 50% emerge functionally literate. True. That cannot be good for any country in the global knowledge economy of the 21st century. And as I said before, we need, we need Pakistan to flourish. So although education and primary education is not a magic wand that is going to fix every problem, uh, it is an area where we think uh, we can help make a difference. And as I say, it's not so much about building classrooms, although we are doing some of mm -hmm. that. It's not so much about providing textbooks, although we will provide six million textbook sets over the next four years, three years now. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's not even in the end about training teachers, although we aim to do the teaching of some 90,000 teachers uh, between now and 2015. It's much more about helping provincial governments transform the way that the primary education sector is run so that uh, it gives real value for money for the Pakistani taxpayer and it unleashes the low-cost private sector to provide much more access to education for very, very ordinary mm -hmm. Pakistani boys and girls. We have an exciting uh, scheme in Punjab, for example, which is helping poor girls get into school through a voucher scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with both the Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provincial authorities looking at how to monitor, evaluate, and incentivize the uh, delivery of primary education. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we believe we're already seeing results. We're also, I should say, engaged in both Sindh and Baluchistan. Okay. Um, in your video introducing the con Celebrating Connections project, you said the United Kingdom does a lot of good work in Pakistan and goes unnoticed. You've talked about education, but what all are you doing? What are the areas that, that the British High Commission or the British Council is working in um, culturally, for development, support, on all these areas, please, please tell us. Well, just, just some that we'd like to bring out through the Celebrating Connections campaign. Um, maternal and child health. I mean, mm -hmm. we're aiming to cut child mortality in Pakistan, working with Pakistan authorities. Uh, you have one of the worst rates of child mortality under, for under fives on the planet. Uh, that needs to be changed if the country and the economy is to grow. Totally different area, but uh, trade. Uh, we have very energetic uh, uh, commercial diplomacy, trying to encourage, in particular, encourage British companies who are not already in the Pakistan market mm -hmm. to overcome their misperceptions about Pakistan uh, in order to uh, understand that uh, despite what you see on the television about security or corruption or whatever, you can do really good business here. Uh, a, an, another area is sport, where we have the enormous privilege of hosting the 2012 mm -hmm. Olympics and Paralympics this summer. Uh, we have already done a good deal of publicity about that to celebrate the sporting links between the two countries, whether it is uh, the contested area of cricket or it's Amir Khan as the British Pakistani mm -hmm. boxer or so many, many other uh, links besides. Uh, hockey, for example, is sure. uh, a final where I hope to see the United Kingdom and Pakistan play it out for gold. Given what we did with the, cricket, do you still want to do that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll take our uh, chances. I see that. I see that. That's the little yeah. glint in your eye there. So we have been marking the year to go to the Olympics, the six months to go. We've been doing a lot of work with the Pakistan Paralympic Association, but we want to leave a legacy behind as well. And the British Council program, uh, International Inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, is inspiring. It is about working with Pakistan as one of just 20 countries to help build uh, sport into the school curriculum across the country, working with individual schools to uh, develop their sporting facilities, but also to build an understanding of the value of sport as part of a child's education. And that will go on long beyond 2012. So, you know, there are, there are quite a lot of things we're up to uh, that we find beneficial for us uh, and for the 